Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make some DIY jewelry and accessories inspired by the mermaid core aesthetic. I've been seeing this aesthetic all over TikTok lately, and I absolutely love it. I don't know if I'd really consider this my personal aesthetic, because frankly, I am not tan enough. But this summer, who knows, maybe I'll actually get to, you know, go outside and touch some grass. Hopefully, we'll see. In any case, we love a good seashell craft on this channel. If you're looking for even more beach-themed crafts, I did another seashell crafts video last summer that I think would work really well for this aesthetic. I made all these crafts using real seashells. Some of them are from my last trip to the beach, which was all the way back in 2018. I really need a vacation, I'm telling ya. I didn't have a ton of small seashells though, so I picked up a few more at the craft store. I found these ones at Michael's that already had the holes pre-drilled, which was really convenient. Sometimes you can find shells on the beach that already have holes in them, or you can add the holes yourself. I showed a few ways to do that in the seashell crafts video that I made last year. And for some of the crafts, you don't even need to add holes to the shells, so there's really something for everyone. All of the supplies that I used in this video will be linked in the description, and with all that being said, let's just get into it. This first project is seriously my favorite thing, and it's literally so easy. All you need is some small seashells, a few of these gibbets back pieces, and some UV resin. So on the gibbets backs, you're gonna have one side that's a little bit bigger than the other. You're gonna wanna glue your seashell onto the smaller circle of the gibbets back. Now, how you do this is gonna depend on what type of seashell that you have. If you're using this type of seashell that's hollow in the middle, you'll wanna fill it up most of the way with resin or glue and let it dry before adding your gibbets back piece. Like I said, I'm using UV resin, but you can use pretty much any strong adhesive that you want. In my original DIY gibbets video, I used E6000 glue, but a few of them came apart, so I probably would would not recommend that. You might want to prop your shells up on something like these toothpicks or a popsicle stick so that the resin will cure flat. I didn't quite add enough the first time, so I went back and added a little bit more resin. Then I used even more resin to stick the gibbets back piece to my shells. I cured those one last time and they were ready to go. If you're using a shell that's a little bit more round like these ones, number one, make sure that you're wearing gloves. Then add a little bit of resin to the gibbets back piece and hold it under your UV lamp for a minute until it's partially cured. You don't need to hold it the whole time. I usually cure my resin pieces for at least four minutes so I held it there for a minute and then I just moved it to the side while I held the next one in there. Once all my gibbets were done I popped those in and here's how they turned out. I got these croc slides a couple years ago and I honestly kind of love them. I really like making little sets of gibbets like these. It's kind of fun being able to like decorate them and switch them out. I have been obsessed with making my own jewelry lately and there are so many ways to use seashells in your DIY jewelry projects. For the first necklace, I wanted to use this gray shell that I found. This one just so happened to have a hole at the top, so I didn't need to do anything to it. Other than my shell, I used some 22 gauge wire, jewelry pliers, a one-step looper tool, jump rings, a lobster clasp, some chain, and an assortment of beads that I had. For the base of the necklace, I used my one-step looper tool and some 22 gauge wire to add wire loops to each bead. If you don't have a one-step looper tool, no worries, you can totally get the same effect just by using some round nose pliers and wire cutters. I will say though, the one-step looper tool was definitely worth the investment. It seriously saves me so much time, like especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of DIY jewelry, I definitely recommend this. Just repeat this process with all of your base beads. I use some glass beads that my aunt gave me, some eight millimeter and six millimeter pearl beads, star beads, and a few round like sea glass beads. I turned my seashell into a charm by following that same process of making a wire loop, adding on a pearl bead, then making another wire loop. If you decide to do this method, you'll just wanna make sure that whatever bead that you're using is slightly larger than the hole in your shell. You can leave the pearl like this, or you can hang a charm from it like I did. I got these ones from Michaels back when I did my Pura Vita bracelets video. It doesn't look like they sell these anymore, but I got this set of charms from Amazon recently that included a lot of like, sea life type charms that I think would work well for this too. I just slipped the beads into my shell and that was it. I made a few more charms using those seashell beads that I got from Michaels. For these ones, I used my round nose pliers to make a loop with some 26 gauge wire, making sure to leave a little bit of extra wire to twist around the base of the loop. I like doing this when I'm using thinner wire to make sure that the loop won't come undone. I threaded the other end of the wire through the hole in the shell and wrapped it around like this again, making sure to twist it at the top to secure it. I cut off the excess wire, and now my necklace was ready to assemble. I started my necklace by adding a jump ring to that middle shell and used more jump rings to link the rest of the beads together. When I got to the part where I wanted to add a charm, I just added
added both the seashell charm and the neck speed before closing the jump ring. If you need a more detailed explanation on this, I used a similar technique for this necklace in my aesthetic jewelry video, but it's a pretty easy process, it just takes a minute. Once everything was put together, I added a lobster clasp to one end of the necklace and a piece of chain to the other. Honestly, I typically don't bother with the chain since these necklaces are just for me, but I think it's nice to be able to make them adjustable and then you won't have to worry about making it the exact perfect length. But after all that, here's how my first necklace turned out. I really like what I did with the gray shell in the middle, but I'm not so sure about the little ones. What do you think? Should I take them off or leave them? I also made this necklace using a similar technique. I used my one-step looper tool to add a piece of 22 gauge wire to each bead, just like before. This time, I didn't worry about closing the loops, because instead of adding jump rings in between each bead, this time I just connected the loops to each other instead. I have been loving the look of these mismatched bead necklaces the past couple years. It's such a great way to use up any random beads that you might have. I finished the base of this necklace the same way that I did before, adding a lobster clasp to one end and a chain to the other. I wanted to add a second, like, layer of beads to this necklace. Um, is layer the right word? Eh. You can see what I mean. This is why I love these bead boards, like especially if you're using a bunch of beads that are different sizes, it is a great way to measure and sort of like gauge how long each of these strands will be. I wanted to have two strands of beads sort of like hanging down from the first one. So I just opened the wire loops on the end of each strand and attached it to one of the wire loops in the middle of the necklace. I figured out about how much I wanted each strand to hang down, then I attached the ends the same way. My original plan was to hang one of these bottle charms in the middle, but I thought that it was way too long and I just really didn't like how it looked, so instead I made another one of those seashell charms like we did for the first necklace. Only this time I put it on backwards so the outside of the shell will be showing. I just attached the shell to the middle of the necklace and here's how it turned out. I really like this one, I think it's super cute. The only thing about it is that I think that it is a little bit bulky in the middle. I'm not really sure how I would fix that. Maybe if I use smaller beads in the middle next time. But I could definitely see myself wearing this one a lot this summer. If your seashell doesn't have a hole in it and you don't want to drill one, a little hack that you can try is to actually just glue a pearl bead to the back of your shell. For the last necklace that I made, I made a loop with some wire and added that to my bead before sticking it in my shell. I like to use UV resin for things like this because it's a lot more secure than most of the glues that I've tried. Plus it dries a lot quicker too. But if you don't have resin, you could definitely try it with glue instead. I just cured that under my UV lamp, then made another loop in my wire to make a little seashell charm. You can stick the beads anywhere on the back of the shell. And you could leave out the wire and use string instead to make other types of jewelry. But I wanted to turn this seashell into like a rosary style necklace, using some of these gemstone beads that I had. I made this necklace basically the same way that I made the rest of them, but this time I wanted it to be a little bit longer. I just added a wire loop to each of my beads and stuck a small jump ring in between each one like we did for the first necklace, finishing it with a lobster clasp on one end and a chain on the other. To turn it into a rosary style necklace, I attached three more beads with jump rings just like we did for the main part. I attached the shell on the bottom, then folded my main necklace in half to find the middle and attached this piece there. After all that, here's how my last necklace turned out. I don't know if the color scheme exactly screams mermaid core, but you know what? It's something different. I like it. Hopefully people don't like it. consider this cultural appropriation. I don't know. It's a seashell. If you do, calm down, I guess. I made a couple pairs of earrings too. I used some of these ball stud posts that have a loop on the bottom to hang things. I really like these because they don't pull on your ears like the hooks do. I feel like these are pretty self-explanatory. I just used my one-step looper tool and did that same technique with adding a pearl to the shells for this one. You know what I just thought? You could probably just do the wire loop and leave the bead off if you just wanted the shell. I thought these would work well with either the first or the second necklace. I also made some with these glass fish beads. I got these ones from my aunt, but I actually did find these on Etsy, so I'll go ahead and link those below. I feel like with these earrings, I'm gonna need to wear them with my hair up because when I have my hair down you can't really see the fish and that's like the main part of the earrings. But those were all the projects that I had time for this week. If you made it this far make sure to let me know which one was your favorite. I think my favorite was either the gibbets or this necklace. If you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know which aesthetic I should do next. I really want to do some sort of like Barbie core crafts video before that movie comes out. And maybe I could do like a coconut girl themed one. That might be fun with summer coming up. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you guys later. Bye!